Greetings, friends. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program with Dr. Bob Teal. Dr. Teal, you have to talk to us about the U.S. attacks on February 2nd on specified targets in the Mideast. Well, let's go over a few news items. Here's one. Iraq warns Middle East is now at the brink of the abyss after 16 killed in U.S. revenge strikes on Iranian-backed militias. Iraq has slammed U.S. airstrikes following Friday's attacks, warning that the aggressive strike puts the region on the brink of the abyss. America launched missiles against more than 85 targets in Iraq and Syria, including Iranian-backed militias, killing at least 16 people. The White House said Iraq was warned ahead of the Blitz, which targeted uh, military command and control headquarters and ammo stores. America also aimed at targets in countries linked to Iran's Revolutionary Guard Quds Force and associated groups. Iran has been repeatedly tied to the ongoing conflict exploiting the Middle East and is believed to be financing and providing weapons to groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, and Houthis. Leaked documents suggest the American Blitz was coming after three American troops were killed in Jordan by an Iranian-made drone piloted from Iraq. Mm. The U.S. Central Command revealed the strikes used more than 125 munitions delivered by numerous aircraft, including long-range bombers. U.S. President uh, Joe Biden said, let all those who may seek to do us harm know this. If you harm America, we'll respond. Britain expressed support on Saturday and said U.S. had the right to respond to attacks on American troops. And a government spokesperson says the U.S. and U.K. are steadfast allies. So that was one report. Now I want to go through another one. Iran's foreign ministry Saturday condemned overnight U.S. airstrikes strikes in Iraq and Syria as violations of the sovereignty and t territorial integrity of the two countries. In Tehran's first response to the U.S. strikes, ministry spokesman Nasser Kanani said in a statement they represented, quote, another adventurous strategic mistake by the United States, which will only result in increased tension and instability in the region. There's one, one report from BBC I want to go over. It says the strikes caused damage and death, but on a relatively limited scale. Mm. There was no element of surprise. The clock began counting down last Sunday after the killing of uh, three U.S. troops in Jordan. The attacks were carefully calibrated and telegraphed in response. Key figures in Iranian-backed militias had plenty of time to get away from the obvious targets. Mm. Militias had a chance to safeguard weapons and ammunition. Iraq's military has warned that U.S. bombing raids could lead to dire consequences for the region. So if the U.S. notified the other countries about the attacks and the other countries attacked the U.S. first, do you think this will be the end of the matter? No. Plus, the United States has indicated it's going to do more attacks. Okay. What it's hoping to do is discourage Iran from continuing to back its proxies who will attack the U.S. and uh, Israel. Now, are we at, in the abyss, a downward spiral, spiral of no end? Not quite, but some, of the, some people see these as steps toward World War III. And I saw a report about that this morning. Let me read from this. Two days ago, the Telegraph was headlining, World War III is approaching fast, and too few are willing to admit why. Two days before that, the UK Mirror went with, World War III. Chilling signs U.S. and U.K. are heading for an all-out conflict amongst global unrest. Yesterday, a place called Spike said, are you ready for World War III? Before adding, our saber-rattling elites need to take a deep breath. And it says, Trump is trumpeting that Biden's carelessness has left the world on the brink of World War III. What do you say? Is this World War III or not? Oh, no, it's not World War III. World War III won't start for at least three and a half years, and based upon prophecies such as Daniel 9.27. And prophecies of Daniel 11 show that this will actually basically be a massive attack from the coming European beast power. Yeah. Now, that said, we're in the time Jesus called the beginning of sorrows. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 24, the words of Jesus, starting in verse 6 from the New King James Version of the Bible. Jesus said, and you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. 
All these are the beginning of sorrows, end quote. So yeah, there's wars and rumors of wars, but the end's not yet. But we're going to see a lot more military conflict before World War III starts. And World War III, by the way, starts at basically beginning of the Great Tribulation that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, verses 21 to 22. Okay. Now consider that the U.S. Central Command confirmed in the statement the airstrikes were carried out in Iraq and Syria against Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Quds Force, and affiliated militia groups. Now related to that, I saw something headlined yesterday in the news. So let me read from this. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said, quote, for years, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps and its Quds forces have been instrumental in the Iranian regime's violent suppression of political dissent, targeting of Iranian dissidents living abroad, and support of international terrorism, including groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Today's charges show how, as alleged, this group force built a sprawling international network of front companies to launder sanctioned Iranian oil using lies, forgeries, and mm. threats of violence. Okay. This alleged scheme to finance the Quds forces succeeds through the complicity of wealthy businessmen in countries like Turkey, who are eager, eager to turn a corrupt profit from supporting terror groups. The Quds Force oil laundry network allegedly delivered millions of barrels of Iranian oil to government affiliated buyers in Russia, China, and Syria, and transferred billions of dollars to the US financial system. Hmm. And so this person says that they're trying to stop this on behalf of the United States. So yes, Iranian involvement has had terror, yet I'm gonna read another news item, quote, Iran says the attacks by the United States inside Iraq and Syria are a strategic error that will only add to tensions and instability in the Middle East, end quote. Now, as far as military matters go, Iran has been financing, supporting various militaristic groups in the Middle East and elsewhere. And some of them have directly attacked U.S. troops and other USA interests. What is the Iranian interest in being involved with this militarily and financially? There's a couple of different reasons. Some are political and some are actually theological. Some of the leadership in Iran believe that causing chaos is necessary for a leader known as the Iman Mahdi to rise up, which is consistent with certain uh, Islamic prophecies. Uh, they hope this leader will basically put out the Iranian Shiite form of Islam. Yet biblically, Iran is not prophesied to lead the Islamic world, but a different leader, most likely from North Africa is, according to Daniel chapter 11, verses 40 to 43. However, we need to consider that the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 22, the first 10 verses, shows a time is coming that God is gonna take away the protection of the little nation called Israel and the city of David called Jerusalem. And it also shows that Iran and Syria are going to be involved in attacking uh, the current state of Israel. And you and I actually did a video on that called mm -hmm. Iran and Israel conflict. Now, it's likely that a broader regional war is going to be a factor in the coming temporary peace that's going to come to the Middle East, according to Daniel 9, 27. And we continue to see steps that look like they're leading towards that. It would seem foolish for Iran to get involved in a war with the USA. Well, as far as the USA itself goes, sure, it's militarily superior to Iran. But soon, Iran may have working nuclear weapons if it doesn't already have one or more now. If so, it may be inclined to use them. And that could be used against perhaps the United States or uh, more likely Israel. Now, the United States, despite its military strength, is vulnerable to being hurt by terrorist forces, as well as electronic, uh, electromagnetic pulse weapons, as well as chemical weapons, dirty bombs, terrorism, biological weapons that Iran and or Syria already possess. Mm -hmm. And it's been shown in the test that electromagnetic pulse bombs can basically work as advertised, and they may give the Iranians some additional reason to <clears throat> further look into using them if they feel pressed. So how would Iran be able to use those EMP weapons against the U.S.? Probably with one of its ballistic missiles. Now, this could cripple uh, some or even much of the United States by knocking out the 
power supply. But let's just assume that the U USA and Iran do di more directly fight and Iran loses. Does that mean its proxies, Iran's proxies are gonna give them up? Probably mm -hmm. not. Furthermore, there have been Iranians with terrorist ties who were captured trying to enter the United States in recent months. I would suspect that there's certainly already some in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanna to go to the fact that the Bible talks about terrorism prophesied to hit places like the United States. I'm gonna start with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let me read verses uh, five and 25. They have corrupted themselves. They are not as children because of their blemish, a perverse and crooked generation, which amongst other things, I believe applies to the United States. Now verse 25, the sword shall destroy outside. There shall be terror within. Terror within, that means terror within the boundaries of the borders. Now we'll go to the book of Proverbs. There's a warning there. Proverbs chapter one, starting verse 25. It says, because you've disdained all my counsel. In the United States, they turned it back against the Bible. And would have none of my rebuke. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm. And your destruction comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you. Again, I see this being applicable to the United States. Furthermore, we go to <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 15, starting verse 6. We read, you have forsaken me, says the Lord. You've gone backward. I'm going to stretch out my hand and destroy you. I'm weary of relenting. I will destroy my people. Uh, since they do not return from their basically evil ways, I will bring against them, against the mother of their young men, a plunderer at noonday. I will cause anguish and terror to fall on all of them suddenly. So even if terror within is prophesied, does Iran have the ability to attack the U.S.? Yes, it's got ballistic missiles and has the ability okay. to do something. It can't, doesn't have the ability to destroy the United States, but certainly can attack. Now, that said, this terror within comment shows that terror is going to happen within the borders of the United States and also suggests some terrorists are already residents. More terrorism is coming. Now, many are cheering the USA attacks, like finally the United States is responding to the 160 or 70 mm -hmm. or whatever it is attacks from uh, Iranian proxies. And others have gone out and said, this is too little, too late. But having said that, do not think that military attacks from the United States, the ones that they've done and the ones they intend to do, will not have unintended consequences like terrorism. Now that said, as far as World War III coming, it is going to come. I don't think it's gonna come uh, for, uh, for like four years or, or more, but we'll see. But terrorist attacks, such as the prophecies that I mentioned, as well as prophecies in, for example, the, the book of uh, Psalm, Psalm 83, talks about taking crafty counsel, which I believe is a, an indication of terrorism coming. Now, this looks like this is going to start, and it's not going to start uh, uh, too many years from now. So, again, people are gleeful that the United States is doing this attack, but do not think there are, uh, are no consequences. There will be unintended consequences uh, to the United States for this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Teal. For more interviews with Dr. Teal, in addition to written as well as audio articles, visit our website at BibleNewsProphecy.net. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program.